Hello everyone and welcome back to episode, I don't even know what episode it is now, of the Armchair Podcast. Hope you're all well. Um, there's been some pretty spooky things kicking off Not off. in our sort of house. We film in his shed, by the way, for any of you listeners who are listening in. Mm. And sometimes you can hear some weird noises. Um, my dad slept in here once overnight and he thought he was going to get abducted by an alien. So there is some really strange things, and we've had a bit of an incident where we could hear this beeping sound. We thought it was the yeah. smoke alarm. We took the batteries out of the smoke alarm. Turns out it was an alien. If you watch um, Breaking Bad, it was like that episode where they try to find the fly um, because they can't cook. Turns out it was a second smoke alarm that it was in a bag that my dad put in here because it's an absolute a-hole. Yeah. Moving on. But yeah. What a day. I mean, What a day. What a day. It's a beautiful evening here. Uh, and London is red. Well, North London, anyway. Yeah. Well, pretty much London. Well, uh, if you're watching this, obviously, this has been filmed on Sunday, and uh, Arsenal have just won the North London derby, so we're going to talk everything about the North London derby. Um, and before I kick off, I'm just going to play, just going to play this. <laughs> I didn't mean to play the second one, but... <laughs> yes, that's yeah. what we want. Gooners, that's my mate. Shout out to Kai Hemingway. He's a fellow Gooner. Um, good performance from Arsenal today. What what did you make of it? Um, yeah, it was overall, I would say, it was a really... I, th- I think we dominated the game. We played really well in some sec- in some parts. We were unlucky not to score earlier. I mean, even Mourinho admitted that they played terribly. I mean, they did play terribly. And other than that, unbelievable Lamella Rabona they were pretty poor and we should have like we should have finished the game in the first half if we took our chances the second half a penalty which was pretty controversial um you know I mean he Lacazette literally slices the ball I don't think it's controversial at all I just think he's missed this I, I don't know. There's how no chance left. I don't though. know how he's missed that. There's obviously no chance left, but it's still mm. a penalty. I, I think it is. Like, Anywhere on the midfield, into, yeah, like any right. other place on the pitch, it'd be a foul. Yeah, doesn't matter, does it? No, exactly. Uh, I think for Mourinho, uh, I've just got one thing. This this is for Mourinho. One second, it's asking me to download this. It's an MP3. Download. Time to go. Let me play that one more time. Thank yeah, you. just so you get it. It's time to go. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, I don't know. Like when I saw the Spurs Arsenal lineup come out, I th- I know we've been doing well, but again we got that draw against Burnley. We've had a rocky season. When you look at that Spurs team on paper, especially that front four, when Dele Alli's in there, Lucas Moore is pretty decent as well, though. And you're looking at Bain, Bale, Bain, Bane. Bain. <laughs> 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 pretty much he is like Bain. Is that he's OP? Bale, Harry Kane, and um, Son. I know Son got injured, but you're thinking they have to do so much better. Like, I was scared. I was thinking Bale's... One of them's definitely in a turn up. Harry Kane did a bit towards mm-hmm. the end, but only because we let him. Um, I think, um, yeah, I'm really... Dis- if I was a Spurs fan, I'd be ut- I'd be so disappointed. Not only with this game, this game especially, though, but all season. It's it, it's to say where you were, and I've said this in previous podcasts, that you were you know, winning the league, right, supposedly in November, and even top four race, and now it's slipped to we're beating you... Uh, you know, tenth against seventh, and and we might even catch up to you now. It's 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 embarrassing. Like I don't that Jose Mourinho style of football in the first half. I don't know what I was watching. It was like we were Man City playing against Burnley. Yeah. Like we had like seventy percent possession. Yes, they scored from a freak goal with Lamella. That was an absolutely world class finish. Fair play from a shit player. Yeah. Well. That's yeah, pretty much. He's not great. He was supposed to be the Bell replacement, and in, in that time, Spurs since Bell left and they spent the money to replace Bale, they've won zero trophies. Bale's won four Champions League. He's come back and he's getting benched for Lamella. No, he didn't get benched. Today. Yeah, but well, he he's been. brung he's yeah. brung Bale off and left Lamella on. Yeah, and no, he scored. But Gareth Bale, it's ridiculous. And like you think about it, if Bale was on and he was stood over one of them free kicks instead of Harry Kane, maybe. But to be fair, Harry Kane, Harry Kane nearly scored with them free kicks. Yeah, um, good go, didn't he? But I've been talking for a, a lot, so I just think we we dominated, we deserved to win, and then when Lamella, who I just 
words cannot describe the feelings that I have for Lamella. Um, he's just such a dirty yeah, player. Yeah, he's just a... Well, yeah. I think the whole team... I mean, Lamella's always been probably a bit of a, a dirty sort of that type of player. But I think Mourinho's... Um, if I can imagine a Mourinho team talk just based off that Amazon mm. Prime documentary that came out and he's always like let's again, especially mm, against yeah. rivals let's play dirty let's and also this there's this narrative that Arsenal are soft I think that's gone now yeah uh, and he, and he pro- imagine, you can imagine the sort of things he was saying before the team talk dig into them you know bully them yeah. wind them up and they tried to do that especially Lamella Harry Kane tried to do it as well Hoiberg. but it, it failed miserably to the point where they actually got a red card and it backfired yeah it was funny and obviously poetically it was Lamella, uh, who did the Rabona. Um, and at that point, I thought, okay, brilliant. We've got the win now. 10 men. They're down to 10 men. Let's just see it out. And that that 15 minutes was the worst 15 minutes of football I've seen Arsenal play all season. I seriously could not believe what I was seeing. I was raging. As a, obviously, getting off the topic of that game, in general, Arsenal have been poor. Um Paul, when it comes to, we've been the uh, makers of our own downfall. So, uh, yeah, I just think, you know, we, again, after that red card, any other team, you know, if we want to be a top team, especially in a European Cup competition, you 2 nil, 2 1 up, you know, you're pretty comfortable. Just control the game. Don't make any mistakes. We seem to crumble and we are, we, we make mistakes, like pointless mistakes. Like mm. why? Why? I think and, and is it a mentality it thing? Was, it's it's uh, not today, the coaching. I think it was just Partey eh, today. How um, do we fix that? Because it seems like it's a recurring theme. Will it get better? I mean, oh, t- I, was, I wasn't the manager. I was just a fan watching the game, but I was so pleased with that performance. Really, really pleased. But the final 10 minutes ruined it for me because yeah. we could have so easily drew that game. So, so easily. To it be was fair, so poor. There, were, there were no massive individual errors today. Um, Partey, I felt, in the last 10 minutes, really showed his lack of fitness. Um, it's just that you, it's, it's always too close. fine, though. Like, every time, it's fine. It's, too, it's, a, bit, it's a bit say, too close, though. Okay, whatever. Um, you're li- you were literally like this. Anyway. Maybe then. All right, it's fine. You I think it's because that. I listen to it. Sorry, right, okay. so Right, anyway. And obviously, I can hear my voice and then you're... Um, what was I going to say? Probably well, something really crap. No, me. I was going to say, Partey really showed his lack of fitness today. I, th- I don't think he was fully fit. Um, especially, it really showed that I think leggyness. he would have been hooked off instead of Shaka if he didn't get that yellow card. But I think the yellow card was Partey's fault because Partey kept giving the ball away and yeah, leaving Shaka I mean, to be yeah. the one to clean up. Shaka actually, credit to Shaka, I, f- I always think his pants. He had, he had a brilliant form really today. Really good. It was almost... Um, I know Partey still carried the ball well at times and stuff, but it was quite a poor performance from, from him again. Uh, especially that last 10 minutes. Like, what? he sort of caught, like, this caught, started this chain reaction of giving away yeah. silly, the ball. I think, away. in fairness, he was good and he sprayed the ball about really well. He yeah, linked he it with Odegaard in the midfield really well. Um, and I just think the last 50 minutes wasn't necessarily his own fault. It was more game management. And I think Arteta should have thought, well, let's bring on Elneny earlier. I mean, I said 25, probably 10 minutes before Partey even started doing that. Right. Make make a midfield change, and it's this. Um, it's at these times when players get tired that they're more prone to injuries as well. Yeah, exactly. And we don't want players to get injured again. No. So um, I was surprised he didn't get took off. To be honest, I was very surprised. But I think it was because it, if Shaka didn't get that yellow card, I think it would have been um, party to come off instead. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't want to dwell on the negatives. <laughs> I think it's funny um, as an Arsenal fan how badly Spurs are doing. I don't think Mourinho is going to last much longer. We um, can't. We can't say much. I know to they be won. Fair. F- they won five games in a row. No, but, but ours is a long-term project. Mourinho is not bringing through youth. It's not a long-term project. The guy's fifty years old. Um, he, he, you know, he might still be a manager, man, maybe for another five years. Roy Hodgson, mate. Was he? 72? Yeah, I understand, but I don't think Mourinho will manage at a lower level. I don't think he'll accept that he's actually finished. Yeah. Or, or not fin- As in, I, di- I don't. I don't think Mourinho's finished. I think he's finished at the top level. I don't think he's a top manager anymore. I think he's still a good manager. He can still rile a team up, especially, you know, if he was at a lower, a mid-table team. Mm. I think they'd do well. But I think he's a, a type of character who is a winner. And um, if, you, if you're a winner and mm. you're that type of mentality, I don't think, I, I think he'll I, be done in management. I don't know. I think he's at, he's at Tottenham. So they're, they're not going to do He'd be fine well. if he moved to the Tur- like a different league where he was a, a top team in a Turkish league yeah, or the Greek what league. What I'm going to argue to him, did he, did he fail at Man United? No. 
Like he was the best manager there since. But at he's the been, moment, he was, it, he's won more than Ole has. He's won, and you know, at the I mean? moment, he's failing at Spurs now. Yeah, he's and, failing and at Spurs, but that's Spurs. And I would it argue that he failed. Tottenham. He failed at Man United because instead of just sticking with it, um, he was constantly moaning and making excuses, which is not a good management, from my opinion. Like I understand that you you want back in, but. Perhaps if he waited another season, he would have been mm. backed because they've gone out since in the transfer window and they have bought players. The way the way they the way that clubs were at, I mean, you could do a podcast on Man United alone and and the problems they have there, um, and some of the signings just did not work out, and you know, it, it was a bit of a mixed bag for him. But I don't know if Jose Mourinho is is finished. I feel like Spurs are Spurs. Um, I Pochettino, who is lauded as one of the you know potentially going on to be. Well, he's at best. PSG now, yeah, so exactly. he's a top, top so he manager. Highly rated. But he's proved that. He couldn't even win a trophy with Spurs. There's a mentality thing that I thought Jose Mourinho, and he still could prove us wrong, there's a mentality thing at Spurs where, like, they, because they haven't won a trophy for so long, it's so hard it's to get over that yeah. hump. Um, but yeah, I was watching, I suppose, this is sort of running Josh between me and uh, my brother, but I've been watching this series on Netflix called Last Chance You, and it's about this basketball team. And you see the passion and sort of the patience. I know it's college basketball, so it's different. But if you compare, if you look at managers across the Premier League and, and you can just sort of judge someone from how they come across, how you think they would be as a manager. And I think if I was a player, how would I react to these different managers playing under them? And you sort of see, it's interesting when you put yourself in that sort of suit, shoes because I just think Mourinho so to- would be so toxic yeah. as a manager. Let's and I just don't think I would play for him, want to play for him. He's mismanaged Deli Ali. I think Spurs yeah. fans would admit that. He's mismanaged Bale. Um, so bad. I mean, when, let's just talk about when Bale got hooked off. That was funny. That was that was. Ba- I mean, let's be honest. Bale was fairly anonymous, yeah, in the first half. But, but so was there. Kane. But he, he was he was one of the contributors to the first goal. Exactly. If he didn't whip the ball, in, I mean, it was a great ball into the box. I think Regulon passed it on to Lamella, and then the goal came from that. So if it wasn't Bale whipping that into the box with a nice cross, it, the goal wouldn't have happened. And I think he was one of the more lively players out of the three. Mm. Son got injured. Kane literally didn't have the hardly have the ball in the first. I think Bale's the the player who can ha- bring that little spark of magic, apart from Lamella, obviously, yeah. with that amazing little flick. But I don't think losing Son helped them because he was really there. He's that counter-attacking presence of he can run off defenders and cause problems and stretch us, whereas Kane and Bale don't quite have the, the pace to do that. They do have quality, but not quite the pace. So The reason why I think Mourinho's finished as a manager is because I think his playing style is outdated. I think teams now, if you look at the the, the, the teams that win the league, Liverpool... Man City, uh, even teams in foreign leagues that win the league, they tend to keep the ball. Um, they tend to play or at least ha- fluid, press. fluid pressing, attacking football. Mourinho is the exact opposite of that. You'd think with that front three, with if you could get the best out of Deli Ali as a cam, you'd think they'd destroy us today. Oh yeah, with that yeah. with that attack. I mean, Harry Kane is a world class player, all round player now, distributor, son world-class on his day. Mm-hmm. You could argue, obviously, he's not been that consistent under Mourinho, but he was world-class at the start of the season. He's a world-class player. Bale, Bale on his world-class. Day, yeah. That's a world-class attack. And and with Deli Ali with the right um, coach, at the right I mean, coach class could be class. Pochino, yeah. yeah. So I d- it, Spurs should not, he won't last there. And I think his football's out. He needs to change because mm-hmm. it's, it's poor. If I was a Spurs fan, I'd be so disappointed because they didn't even come at us in the first I half. I mean, Spurs fans could argue and anyone could argue, okay, so why do you back Arteta? We're actually doing worse than the season. And that's true. But the, 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 dif- the, the fundamental difference is, first of all, you can see, if you watch Arsenal, you can see where the improvement will come. Players like Emil Smith Rowe today, who was absolutely superb today, him and Tierney on the left were brilliant. Players like Saka, uh, players like Kieran Tierney, players like Gabriel, who's still 23, who was monumental today as well. Um, we've got a really good crop of young talent coming through. So you can see, like, okay, he even said himself, it, it can just go bang. If we get one or two good players in, it could really shape up to be a great squad and we could have a go, you know, at least get in top four. Yeah, I, I, the, I'm key, the key thing as well, um, I know we didn't have amazing success under Arsene but we, we uh, and the difference between Arteta and Lampard is that Lamp- uh, Arteta has already won two trophies. I know, the commu- I know it's community, but he's already won two trophies in two games that counted. So, Again, and that was an that was an insane cup run. We've improved in the Europa League, which is good. 
um, we show him more resilience. The overall, those signs of improvement under Arteta, and he is a super young coach. And um, there was reports, don't know if these are true, that Barcelona are even touting him already. And he's only been at Arsenal for a season and he's doing so bad. So that just shows how highly he is rated. All the managers have spoke, him, spoke of him really well. It seems like every time a manager speaks now, a current manager or a manager of the past about Jose Mourinho, it's always about Jose Mourinho was or Jose Mourinho, I've got huge respect for him. But I don't think that's anything to do with to do with what he's done in the, in the past few years. I think he did well at Man United, but even that mm -hmm. went a bit. And, and what what ended up at Chelsea with all that, I don't know. I just think he's not, um, he's not, yeah. And that that's what happens though. You know, when you, you don't have a relationship with one club, uh, no one's got loyalty to Jose Mourinho now. No one in football, you know. And if he if fails at Tottenham, there's no. Let's start this debate. Fan loyalty to if, him. If um, that's another thing as well. If if Mourinho fails at Tottenham, as in he gets sacked at the end of this season or next season, they don't do very well. That he doesn't win a trophy, basically. Mm -hmm. Where does he go next? Like, do you think he then realizes that he's done at the top level, or what? What? What's your personal opinion on it? Because obviously, he's been a very successful manager. He's still won trophies at Man United. Mm. He finished second with that team, and he's competing against Man City. But he's not quite one of these managers like a Klopp or an Arteta, or you know, a young manager he's, he's or, or a Pochettino it, who can't. Much. I can't see him building a team. Mm. I don't think he's ever, apart from that Porto team, I don't can't see him building and sticking with the team. It seems like he doesn't have a lot of patience. He hasn't, and he doesn't, I mean, historically, you look at the amount of time he spends at clubs, um, most of the time, uh, he doesn't really like spend much time. even Pep Guardiola, there. that was a project. I know they spent a lot of money, mm. um, but it was still a project. They still had a down periods. They had downturns. Yeah, I mean, the first time he came in, he didn't exactly set, Set the world, set the league on fire, did he? I mean, he came third. Just so seems like when Mourinho comes into clubs, I mean, Spurs, they had this amazing peak of like, oh my god, it's Jose Mourinho. Like, we're definitely things are going to change around here. You know, yeah, like sort of like, oh, it's here. Yeah, a winning mentality. But then yeah. it's like you get used to him, and yeah. then you're like, oh, I don't know if I trust this guy. Personally, um, he'd have to go abroad for me. I mean, Pirlo's have not having a great time at Juventus. Oh, I think he'd so still do. I think the like Premier that. League is a tough, tough, tough league. Yeah. It's the best league in the world, and that's why you get so many managers. It's the most challenging league in the world. Maybe not the best, that's the one way to phrase it. The most fit. challenging. I think he'd still... If he went to a Juve or a different club like that, I think he'd still do well. I, I think possibly. You know, um, I think it's harsh to say he's past it. You know, at the end of the day, he is at Tottenham, so you're not expecting yeah. to win too much. <laughs> um, so... Spurs fans, yeah. let us know as well. I know it's been a bit of banter, but to be honest, I don't think I've bantered you too much. I think I've been pretty like. No, we like, could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I mean, um, go watch AFTV. I think it's a ta like. No, don't watch. From it. you guys, awful performance, and then we only let the the only re the only way I thought we'd lose today. Well, as soon is as us. I saw you, yeah, is us, us. We and we literally we nearly did throw it away ourselves. And and to be honest, that's all I've seen for the past like ten games now. You know, since since Christmas actually. I felt confident going into every single game. I think we've played well, but mm. we do it. We we it's ourselves. We beat ourselves with the, the with the silly mistakes. Well, yeah, just under half of our goals since the turn of the new year have been from individual errors, which is just and not not the opposition putting together a brilliant piece of play. No, like or, it's just poor. So, um, but at the end of the day, it's a positive day. North London's red. We beat Spurs. I, I can't really be too mad, you know? We got a no, win, and that's all that matters. Three points. We had a great week, Olympiakos. So let's just think to our next fixture, you know, which is on Thursday night. And yeah, let's move on. Let's move forward, you know? Let's move on to other teams in the league. I think it's quite interesting at the moment to see how well, speaking of Man United as well and Jose Mourinho, how well David Moyes is doing mm. after that turmoil at Man United and everyone thought he was sort of having the cursed chalice or however you want to uh, describe it. And then yeah. and then he, went, he took a bit of a downwards turn. He didn't do too well in management. And now he's took West Ham to fourth. It looks like they're on, they're in a top, they're in the top four race, West Ham. I, I don't see it lasting. I just... Well, it's lasted so far. No, They've no, got 10 this, games. this season, maybe, but I think next season, let's be honest. Well, who, if they get Champions League football, it won't last because that is tough. tough exactly. Tough. They even got the Europa squad League. Down. Yeah, that, yeah, even the Europa League. Yeah, kill we've, we've seen Leicester drop off after having a Europa League season or Wait, Champions League Burnley season. Burnley got European football Oh my a God, yeah, they did. Ago, yeah. And they it completely, crushed them. It, yeah. it, it was too much and it could be the same. Which is, it's horrible in football when Sean Dyche, for example, built this Burnley team. He's a fantastic underrated manager 
because they're all down there in a relegation battle. But to think he got that not Burnley quite. team, that Burnley team in the in European football, but he's not rewarded for it because the club just can't, ha- yeah. just can't, they can't. Like it's so, and this is why sometimes very controversial opinion people are just unsubscribed when I say this. But sometimes this is why I prefer American sports because you can. You can get like you know one, once a team is on the rise and and gets that player and they get that manager like they can continue that because it's equal. There's not these like European. There's not these superpowers like and yeah. it's equal budget, equal everything, equal draft picks. And so some teams obviously have have higher salary caps than others and are, and the more established brands. But like one year you can get like a team that you never thought would win the championship to win a championship. Whereas in, in football, we got less to that one I time, but it's very, that's probably very, a very conversation unlikely. of itself, just about the modern game and, and how much it does rely on, on money. I mean, you could look at Wolves and say, well, they, they, they're yeah, doing it. But it's a shame. All I'm saying is it's a shame that, yeah, yeah. It's because shame, for yeah. example, he, if Arsenal didn't have constant backing from a multimillionaire or Man City, Imagine what the take. Imagine what it, if it was just based purely on talent and managerial talent and form and not well, money. Think what Man it would City look like now. Be in Man City zone. would not even be in the football league, and these teams like Wolves and Burnley and Leicester would be way higher up. Mm. Uh, we'd be in a shit. We'd be in a shit storm. No, we might be alright because we might be alright because compared got, to everyone else. Yeah, but that's what I mean. So it's just interesting. It's impossible to um, say, but yeah, but yeah. it'd be it'd be very interesting. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. But no, I've got we've gone off a bit on a bit of a tangent here. But um, Lingard might be um, signing permanently for West Ham as well, um, and they might get an increased transfer budget I... because we know West Ham have got money. They built a new stadium. We know they've got money. They've had a ma- remember the start two years. Uh, was it last year or two seasons ago when they bought a Sebastian Haller? They had a mad transfer window. They spent about a hundred million quid, mm. but then they just flunked it. But now they've actually done really I well. Just feel so they've like, got money. They've I got just money. feel like it just went. It just went last. Every but I mean West Liverpool Ham have always have been to strength, Liverpool have to strengthen. West Ham have always been a, um, a, a club fighting at the higher end at, for the European spots though. Yeah, I know that historic. I know that, but I just personally. So I feel like they, they might be. Let's back think there about now. it, right? They might be back there. Now. Liverpool should have been in the top four this season, but uh, they're still in that top six race, though, and that's where they should be. So I feel yeah, like that's he's what done I mean. such so a West great Ham job. Might, might not from even get relegation, top six. from relegation battling last last this time last season or whatever it was to to being in the top six, back where West Ham want to be with the new stadium, which is where they thought they were going to go, a bit like Arsenal when we moved to the Emirates. Yeah. That's very impressive. Yeah, it is, it is. But I'm not saying it... West Ham are going to be world beaters now and always trying to the top four, but they definitely no, are no, trying to like, I'm, I'm not discrediting um, David Moyes. Sounds like you are. I, I'm, I'm really not. He's done a great job. Do I see it lasting? No. And if he does, fair, if it does, fair Ooh. play to him. Let's think about it. Liverpool will strengthen. They have to. We will strengthen. Tottenham will strengthen or get Mourinho out. Um, Chelsea, even Everton. I just don't know if West Ham can keep up with the big boys. Mm. And if they do, fair play to David Moyes. He has done a cracking job. Let's talk about Liverpool as well, because I looked at the table after the game today. They're they're so bad. Yeah. And there's been like this has been touched on probably loads, and Klopp will probably bounce back. But you look at the success that Steven Gerrard's had at Rangers, and you think how long. Like, what would it take for Klopp to actually go, do you think? Because um, obviously he's obviously gained loads of respect now because of the Champions League win, the Premier League win, the first time they've won a Premier League in years. You know, like... The Claudio, first time they Cla- ever won a Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Claudio Ranieri was, was, was sacked at Leicester after winning the title the year before. He didn't get a lot of respect. I know they were in a relegation battle, but what would it take for Klopp this season or next season to actually go you know what, say, we're going to take a punt on Steven Gerrard they, they, or, or a different manager. They can't sack Klopp this season. It would be a disgrace. Yeah, to... but how far would they have to fall? So you think uh, no matter what? No, no, no. This season, like, let, let's be realistic here. Everyone, the media likes to big these things up. They could um, easily drop to, like, out of the top 10 now. Yeah, but even that, no way you can you sack that. Okay. No way. How can you sack him? He's literally... Even if they drop out the top 10. Turn your club around. Yes. Do not sack him. Right. Seriously, you... No, right. no, I'm just saying, if, you, just if say, they went on a 10, if they lost every game now till the end of the season, you'd start to think... Like, don't get me yeah. wrong, I, you know, they towards be the doing... end, I was Wenger out, even when he would he had won us, you know, three Premier Leagues, we weren't invincible, effort, loads of FA Cups, but at the end of the day, you know, 15 years, it was 15 years of, fi- you know, mediocrity, really. Whereas Klopp, literally last season, they won a Premier League. The season before that, 
um, they won the Champions League. Yeah, but League. let's get realistic. So, for example, say say they finish. Let's give let's give them tenth. eighth. Let's give them eighth place this season, which no, is tenth. can't sack him. No, I'm no shut up. I know that, but I'm just saying. So they finish eighth. It didn't get sacked because why the hell would you sack him if they finish eighth? Injuries and all that stuff. Next season, if they get to Christmas and they're outside the top four, is that when you start to think? Do you still keep them at that point? If they're outside the top six at Christmas next season, he has to go. Wow, really? Okay. Because there's no way, I don't see like really what, in modern football, I don't see how, where, where is that going to come from, that inspiration? And I know Steven Gerrard has said, so if, if Klopp gets sacked next season, for example, I don't think he will, but you never know because they look in an absolute mess at the moment mess, and yeah. that's hard to get out of. You know, when, you get when players come back and if they make a signing or two in the Premier League, it might completely change. They might be challenging for the league next season. But say this continues, right? Say this continues. Is um, Would Steven, Steven Gerrard's come out and said that he wouldn't take the job? But do you think that would be a good appointment? Uh, or do you reckon they go for a, nag, uh, a Nagelsmann or I don't know how you pronounce it? But no, somewhat, like, I don't think it would be a good, good. I don't think it would. Because, I mean, it, it depends on the context of when he is introduced. If he is introduced when they are, let's say they were seventh, Klopp gets sacked at Christmas, they bring him in at a January transfer window. Gerard comes in. The possibility is that they'd probably have some form of manager boot. You know, he might do all right, but let's say they're challenging, they're in the top four, yeah? They're fourth and Klopp gets sacked or some bullshit. Like, he just gets sacked. Randomly, everyone's like, no way. <laughs> Gerard comes in, it will be really, it will just be an absolute massive task to he's I mean I know he's been in the Scottish League no disrespect to the Scottish League but he gets the jump time to now. the Premier League is time, massive yeah but he get time now and we've but seen you this have time in the with, with Arteta right I know he was he was assistant coach to Pep Guardiola who won the English treble at Man City and had great success and he's been lauded but Steven Gerrard's gone to Rangers a team that was on the downturn and he's managed to uh, win the league. He's managed to win the league. The and, and it's not even... They were. It's no, not, not compared to win. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is it's not just the league form. They're still in European football and they'll be playing Champions League football next season. For now. They're, right, they're in, they're in European f- but football. But they're doing well. For now. They're doing well, We'll see well, where though. that ends. They might go and win it and knock us out. You never know. But if they do, fair play CVG. You know, if... I'd say if Steven Gerrard gets to like the quarterfinals or semifinals of the <laughs> Europa League, <laughs> if he gets to them to the quarterfinals or the semifinals of the Euro- Euro- Europa League, that is ridiculous. Um, because Rangers, I don't think, I'd, I mean, obviously they've got a great history and stuff, but you'd never expect that. Well, I mean, look at who's still in the Europa League, right? Rangers Eight, fans will have right? you on, so on your head on the stick you've got, minute. You've got Man United, right? They're a massive club. You've got Man United, and you've got Spurs, and you've got Ustle in the, in, the, in the Europa League, and you've got all these other... And you've got... Um, who else? So Benfica still... No, we've knocked Benfica out. So I'm Milan. not... I'd have to look... No, because they, no, they they'll, they'll probably get knocked out so by Man So you're saying Tottenham, Man U... Um. So yeah, we look at the Champions League... Uh, the Europa League, sorry. Go on to, uh, on to Stevie G. <laughs> Uh, you got Ajax. You got um, uh, Rangers. Need to get past Slavia Park Para, which is one one, which is one one on aggregate. They should do, get past those, but they are either going to draw Villarreal, um, Ajax, Roma, um, Spurs, or 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 Arsenal. And if they get lucky, they will draw Mold. Right. Let me tell you right now, if. Rain, if Stevie if G, Rangers get past if, the, if Rangers the get if, if if they get past one of these t- big teams, big teams as in because obviously yeah they, they are big, te- they're they're big no they're teams. a big club yeah. but they're a big club a massive club but I'm saying team yeah like they're not a big team Good at the teams, minute then. yeah f- like teams who are um to to be seen as been more successful in recent years yeah and um, seem to play in a better better league in recent times um. Because let's be honest, the Scottish League is pretty much a two-team league. Um, I'm not, but they've got great players. You know, to get to get past to get past um, to get past one of those teams would be huge. Like, say if they, I mean, the worst the worst team in in all them, aside from Mold or Granada, I think it's Granada actually that that, that get drawn against. If they get drawn against Ajax, Man United, Villarreal. Spurs or Arsenal, and they get past one of those five teams, that would be. I would I, honestly, Stephen. That is 
that is huge. Arsenal. That would that would be huge, huge, mm. huge. So yeah, like I'm excited to see um, what happens. But either way, they play in Champions League. They'll be in the group stage of the Champions League next season. Um, so say if Klopp did get sacked in December and Steven Gerrard got them out of the group stage, you'd have to be like, he's he's up, he's because he, to get to get I mean, out of the group stage of a Champions League would be would be immense. To be fair, I just think. First of all, that's a lot of hypothetical stuff. It is, but I'm just beat. This is no, the no, fun of the it, question, though. I yeah. like being hypothetical. No, I mean, we'll see where he's at. At the end of the day, he still won. That's what he set out to do, was win uh, the Scottish the Scottish uh, Prep League. And he's done that. So, you know, credit to him. But personally, I, I think, think it would Lampard... be a bad move for him to go to Liverpool now. I think Lampard would go to Celtic. Should go to Celtic. That would be hilarious. That would be great, wouldn't it? To end the Gerard be Lampard like the, in, debate. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be, That'd be hilarious. Yeah, it'd be like all the because be all the Liverpool fans and the Chelsea fans would be supporting Rangers yeah. and Celtic. It'd be, it'd be brilliant. Like, oh, class. Because, yeah, and then and then if if after that if Celtic then again then went and won the league and Lampard got one over Gerrard, then Stephen Gerrard goes to Liverpool and then he goes back to Chelsea. To be fair, man. Uh, yeah, that, this is ridiculous. Roy Keane will be banned. Yeah, so Roy, Roy Keane has job. been linked to the Celtic job. I think that is terrible. No, that we, that's uh, good uh, for that, Rangers fans. It's good for yeah. I just think it'd be a terrible appointment. He's so fire. I can't see. He definitely rev you up, but you get sick of him just telling you you were yeah. shit. Yeah, he's just a bit of an arsehole. So yeah, no offense. I do actually like it, but I think he would admit he is a bit of an arsehole. Yeah. So I don't know if he's actually going to take that job, but it'd be interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the Europa League. I'm looking forward to see how we're doing the rest of the season, even though it's not too entertaining. The main thing for me is the Europa League. I know that's sad. Oh, 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 oh. Banging tune. It's, it's better than the champion. <laughs> the champ. Yeah, it's dead. Whereas like the Europa League is up to date. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, let me get this up because let's just end it with a Europa League sing along. Because I'm, I'm looking forward to the Europa League. Copyright. Let's just end it on on that, um, and then yeah, I just let's just end it because this we this is this like celebrations for being Europa League winners, and you know by this time in the in the in May or whatever it is. You can't tell me this isn't an absolute <laughs> dirty tune. I mean, it's like EDM. Like, the Champions League is classical. This is like pure EDM. Right. Like, you can imagine just all the lads in the changing room, just like... David Guetta. Come on! Shout out to Arsenal. Yeah. Shout out to his family. That was the worst that thing ever. If you've not seen that, uh, David Guetta solves racism. Go watch it. Cures racism. Cures it, sorry, of course. I think this song could, could cause uh, cure feminism. Here we go. I mean, what? That was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Imagine me and Ibiza. This comes on. It's starting to ramp up now. Twisting a few knobs. Put that this up. just proves Europa League's better than the Champions League. Oh, yeah. You ready? You ready? I'm Let's feeling put it those up. I mean, the players now, this is where you, you're starting to tingle. You're starting to get super hyped. This is it. This is the Europa League. This is the biggest competition in in the world. This is it. We can win this. Look how long is this? <laughs> long enough to get hyped. Here we go. Let's put these up. Is this just... Oh, no. It's... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Let me scare. At this point now, I'd start to actually be pissed be off pissed that it's off. not kicked in. Um, I'd actually start to question why are we in the Europa League? We probably this is this is a crap competition. Shit yeah, why are we even in here? Why why what's the point in trying? But then oh wait. Just when you thought it was gonna drop. And Arsenal! are the Europa League winners of 2021 as new captain Willian lifts the Europa League trophy. Aubameyang has been sold to Hertha Berlin. Banging tune. Love it. (sighs) 
You can tell, you know, no wonder we love that. We've been hearing it for four years now. Yeah, it's kind of sad to yeah. think that, like, I've got used to that now. What like, to me, that is, the, that is that's a new like, sound. Oh. That's, that's, that's the sound of Europe to me Beautiful. now. It's not, it's not the... I've even forgot what the Champions League theme tune sounds like. Mm. So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little dance. No one, if you've watched all that, fair play, because that was ridiculous. Yeah, you're a true fan. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, make sure to subscribe. Comment below. I watched that. Announcement. Um, the podcast is now on Spotify. I think it's probably something like Spotify forward slash the armchair podcast. If you search the armchair podcast, I will leave a link in the description. So make sure to click that. You can listen to the audio version. And obviously, of course, make sure to subscribe, like and share with your nan. Mm. Everyone. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye. North London is red. This is all we've got to celebrate now.